golf. It's a world I've grown to love over the years. And in the next 45 minutes, I'm going to give you some basic fundamental tips on how to improve your game. But there's only one person in the world who can do that, and that's you. And the place we have to do it is out there on the driving range. So let's go out there now and try and understand my tips and improve our game. See you out there. Golf is a relatively simple game if you approach it the right way. First of all, we work on the grip. Now, there's three different ways of gripping the golf club. You can have the overlapping grip, which is this way, or you can have the interlocking grip, which is this way, and the very rare one, which I've very seldom seen people use, the baseball grip, which is all ten fingers on the grip. Now, I myself use my own mixture of grip. I've experimented many times. I've come up with, uh, I didn't, I never liked the overlapping grip. I never liked the interlocking grip, so I came up with what I call the Norman grip. It's the more or less a mixture of the overlapping and interlocking. Now, a lot of people have asked me why I've done that. I think for the hands to work as a one, they've got to be as close as possible together. So in doing that, putting these two fingers in between like that, I get the right hand nestled very close to the left hand. And so when the club head goes away from the ball, they're working as a one. They're a unit. There's not one's going to be down the shaft, one's working against the other, they're going to be together. So the grip is really up to your finger size. You've got to experiment whether you want the overlapping or the interlocking or the baseball. It's up to you. Now the best way to have the grip sit in your fingers is, is very simple. What you do is you put your palm of your hand down like this and you just let the golf club sit across the joints of your fingers where your fingers meet your palm. Let them sit there like so, and close your hand. We're talking about the top hand on our club now, the left hand for the right handers and the right hand for the left handers. And we just close our hand up, and when we do, so, do that, the back of your hand should be pointing towards the target. I'll go into that in a little while, but that's how we want the left hand to look. So that, the back of our hand's shooting straight down the target. Now with the thumb, I've read again in books that the thumb should be fractionally to the right center of the grip. I don't necessarily agree with that. My thumb sits directly on top and it's going to sit where it's most comfortable. And the same thing should happen for you. You should feel the most comfortable with your hands. My thumb sits there. And the other thing you've got to remember with your left hand is make sure there is no gap between your thumb and the first finger. If you get a gap like that, you're going to lose control of the club. So keep the thumb on near the top of the shaft, not definitely not to the left of the the top of the grip, either on top of it or fractionally to the right. From there, once we've closed it up, you lift the club head up to a parallel plane on the surface of the ground, and when you let go with the thumb and the first finger, you'll notice that these three fingers here are the fingers that grip the club. They're your pressure points. If you grip them properly, you're going to have complete control of your club when you get to the top of your swing, right there. And if you don't have that correct grip, if your little finger just lets go a little, the club head's going to drop over the top. You're going to lose control of the golf club. And then when that happens, you start your downswing and we get the, like a fishing rod effect. Casting the fishing rod, you fling out with the right hand and it comes in there like that. Now, if you do a little experiment, if you push your thumb down like that, down the shaft towards the club head, you'll feel as though your wrist is lifting up off the grip. Now, as soon as that happens, you're pulling your fingers apart. You're pulling your fingers off the palm and off your grip. Now, if you do it the opposite way, if you pull your thumb up the shaft and pull it nearer to the top, you'll feel as though there's more pressure being developed in these three fingers. That is why I've always been taught and always been by my teacher that to not have any gap between my thumb and my first finger, the point I made before. So the re that is the reason why I'm pulling it up the shaft to create pressure in these three fingers. So when I get to the top of my swing, it's going to remain firm and it's not going to go past parallel. The first finger is really just sits there. It doesn't do much work at all. It's just more or less a, a nice snug, nice mate for your little finger on your right hand. Now your right hand, it's an almost the same principle. When we put the palm down like that, put our fingers together, we want the shaft or the sorry, the grip to run through the joint, just where your fingers meet your palm again. So when we shut your fingers there, your palm of your right hand is pointing in exactly the same direction as the back 
of your top hand or your left hand. So when we close it up like that, fingers open like that, close it up, you can see my little, my fingers wrapping around, pulling my palm in, and my palm is going to be aiming dead straight for the hole. And the same with the left hand, you've got to have pressure points in your right hand. And the pressure points for your right hand are the two middle fingers. And we go through the same principle. We hold the golf club parallel to the ground, and the two fingers that keep all the pressure are your middle two. And you'll feel that the grip is in the butt of your hand there, and you'll feel the pressure you need to hold there. If you can't do that, your fingers aren't strong enough to grip the golf club anyway. So when we got our hands together, like so, we've got the back of our left hand pointing to the target, the palm of our right hand there, and the V, the V you form there, goes somewhere between your right shoulder and your chin. Now it sounds a little complicated, but if you just concentrate on holding your hand with your left hand up here like this, your pressure point's there, with the back of your hand pointing to the target, there are three things to remember with that. Make sure your thumb and your first finger are very close together, and then we've got the pressure there. With the right hand, the same thing, make sure your pressure fingers are close together, put them on the grip like so, and when we close up, we've got a perfect little unit there where nothing can get away from anything. So no matter whatever pressure we get under or whatever shot we have to play, our grip is going to remain constant. The pressure is going to remain constant. Now, to talk about the word pressure, most people I see play golf get on the first tee, and the pressure in their hands get very tense. You can see the whites of their knuckles coming out because they're tight, they're tense and they're nervous, whatever it is, they, they just grip it too tight. I'm, all, I'm a strong believer in that when you grip the golf club, just grip it light enough that if someone came along, they'd be able to pull it out of your hands. Now the reason why I do that, or say that, is because as soon as your club head starts the movement back, you're naturally going to tense up. Your forearms must tense up and your fingers must tense up because you're in motion. You can't make a motion without being, without having some muscular contraction. So we start out, if we start at the dress position nice and relaxed, when we take the club head away, your fingers tighten up to a nice pressure that allows you to complete your swing. Now if you have too much pressure in your hands, as soon as you go away, you're going to tighten up a bit more and you start feeling restricted about here. You can't complete your swing, so what happens is you've got to let go of your grip. And as soon as you let go of your grip, we've lost it all. So grip pressure is a very important point when you're starting off on any shot, on any tee. And the more pressure you get under when you've got the club championship or you've got, the, you've got the make a shot at the last to win the medal for the day, make sure you just relax your hands. As soon as you relax your hands, your whole body's going to relax and you're going to be able to swing through it. We move on to our stance. I put the club head there, make sure it's going straight towards the target, and I put my left foot there, and when my left hand takes grip of the club, the top, my left hand on top of the grip covers my instep on my left foot. It's a very simple procedure. I don't know whether it'll help you, but it's a very simple way to make sure your stance and your hand position to your body is exactly the same, every shot. And that's what we're trying to do, is get repetition. Same hole, same hole, all the time. Now we get onto the ball position in your stance. Oh, also, I keep harping on people that keep coming up to me and say, why don't you move your ball back in your stance for every shot? Well, I don't believe in doing that. The simple reason is this. If you keep moving your ball back in your stance, an inch for a five iron, and then another inch for a six iron, and then another inch, by the time you get down to your pitching wedge, you've got the ball in the middle of your stance. So what happens there is you're changing your center of gravity and you're changing your impact point on the club head to the ball all the time. Now what I do is I keep the ball in the same position for every shot except my driver. And this way I'm getting consistency, repetition. I know exactly how far the ball is going to fly from the same position all the time with every club. And the loft of the club, that's why it's designed. Each club has got a certain amount of loft on it, so you just play with it. Just let it happen naturally. Don't change the ball position because as soon as you change it, 
you change your angle of impact, you change the loft on your club, you change the center of gravity, you change your club head speed at impact. There's so many different variables that change. Now that we've done our grip, stance and ball position, let's work on our setup and get nice and comfortable at the setup to hit the golf ball. The best way to do this, I think, is to pretend somebody is going to pitch a ball to you and it's going to land about 10 feet in front of you and the ball's coming hard. Now what are we going to do? We're going to brace ourselves. We're going to put our weight back on our heels. We're going to put our hands in front here. We're going to lean our body a little bit forward to brace and get the impact of the ball. This is pretty much the same way you get set up to the golf ball. We get down there, we get our stance a nice comfortable width, put our weight on our heels, put maybe 70% of your weight back on your heels so you don't fall forward or fall back. You're trying to get all your, your balance around, the, around your heels and around the inside of your legs. We want to feel some pressure going down this part of my leg here, coming down through my instep, and then the same on this part, coming down through my instep. So we don't, when we take the club head away, we don't have our knee going this way. So we have that little bit of pressure going through our knees at an angle like that. Now that we have our nice balanced position here with our weight on our heels, the tension in our legs running down on the inside of our legs through our instep, we just lean our top part of our body forward so we feel comfortable. Let our arms hang down naturally, and where they hang down, you just put the grip in your hands. And that's it. You get a nice comfortable, comfortable position. We're not stretching for the ball too much, ready to fall over when we hit it, and we're not too close to the ball, cramping our style and cramping our swing. We're in a nice, comfortable, relaxed position. Our arms are loose, our shoulders are loose, our muscles in the back of our neck are loose, so we're ready to take the club away. We feel nice and comfortable. Now, we talk about takeaway. The best way to take away a club is to relate the left arm and the golf club as a one. If you're a left-hander, let's relate it this way, where your right arm and your golf club act as a one. And in doing this, when we go to take the ball, the club head away from the ball, everything goes away together. From your shoulder here, down to your club head, we turn it away. We push it back, straight back. And whenever you go to hit the golf ball, you'll always know when you're going to have a good swing is in the first two feet of your takeaway. <clears throat> so the best way to determine that is, as I say, keep everything a one and take it away with the elbow of your left hand or your left arm, I'm sorry. Take that away and push your elbow straight back away from the target. And when that happens, your, your wrist is not going to break. It's not going to start cocking early, which you shouldn't do and it's not going to drag back here like this, which I've seen happen many times with weekenders. Everything is going to go back together. Your right hand, take your right hand off the club for a minute and just practice that. Take it away straight, bang. Every time it's going to go straight back from the ball. You can't do anything else. You can't pull it in here because your hands will be pulling it in here. And if you push out there, your arm's pushing it out there. So if you take it back with the elbow of your left arm, you know you're going to get a nice, smooth, low straight back takeaway and the straighter you take the club back the straighter you'll be able to bring it down and through the ball watch what happens to my right knee if i don't have the pressure going down the inside of my right leg just watch carefully when i take the club head back away from the ball my right knee is going to go with the club head and as soon as that goes with the club head my body's done a lateral movement away from the ball now it's impossible for me to get back to the ball in a nice position for impact from there so the reason why we keep that pressure running down our right side is to keep the knee in the same position throughout your entire swing until after impact. So we, if we keep that knee in the same position like this, keep the weight on the inside, bang, the knee doesn't move, stays in that position. And this is where you get all your power from. To hit the ball long and straight is right here, this part of your body here. Your right hip has gone back, enough coil and to turn your shoulders and turn your the back of your shoulders towards the target and coming down it's a, the uncoiling of this creates so much club head speed coming down is what drives the ball 100 300 yards down the fairway Another little interesting tip, if you 
you want to try and remember it. If you're having trouble moving your hips on your backswing, just try this method. Without using a club, just standing there, just remember pushing the right pocket back. I call it the RPB shot. What we do is move this pocket straight back. You see, just push it back like that. Keep the knee in the same position, but push the pocket back. And see what happens? You're automatically getting a hip turn. Without any conscious movement of your hips like that, you can go bang like that, we've got hip turn. Simple as that. So if we get in a takeaway position here, all we've got to do is remember, right pocket back, slot it into there, and we're getting a turn, and that's it. It's back here, where we want it. So at the top of the swing, we come down, this drives from here, drives forward, turn, bang, away we go. Very simple procedure, very easy one to remember. It's not that difficult to apply and not that difficult to practice. So if you remember these basics and the fundamentals, go out and practice them hard yourself and understand them yourself. You'll be able to go out on the golf course, have a bad day and correct it halfway around. So let's go to the practice tee now and see how we can apply them. If you don't loosen up the first four, five, maybe six holes you play, your body's trying to get loose and you're going to play so many different shots that you haven't played before, you're going to get frustrated and irritated. So you're starting around, you're going to lose your enthusiasm to come out and play, and you're going to lose one third of your round of golf. So we come out on the driving range and we hit a few shots. If there isn't a driving range and they have a driving net, just go into the net and hit maybe 10, 15 shots into the back of the net. If we want to enjoy our game, we want to loosen our muscles up before we play, because most people go out on the first tee and they pull out their drive and they swing. There's two things that can go wrong. A, you can hurt yourself very badly with the lower part of your back or pull a muscle. And B, you're not going to get off to a very good start. So we're out here on the driving range, what we do is we pull out our pitching wedge or your sand iron, one of the shortest clubs in your bag. And we're just going to take a few very loose, slow, soft swings. So the idea of that is to let our muscles get free, get loose, and get relaxed. So I've got my pitching wedge in my hand here and I'm going to concentrate on hitting at about 80 to 85 yards. I don't want to go out there and try and hit my pitching wedge 120 yards, which I can do, hitting it hard, because that's not the idea. We're trying to loosen up. The idea of coming to the driving range is to warm your body up. So first of all, we're not going to concentrate on direction. We're just going to concentrate on getting a nice, smooth swing. So we just put the club down here, grip the club nice and loosely, and just hit the ball about 85 yards. Hit this shot about five, maybe eight times, and each time you hit it, just start to hit a little bit harder. Feel your body starting, your legs working a little bit stronger. So eventually when you finish hitting your eight pitching wedges, you're up to about your full strength. One of the most important factors of warming up too is concentrating on your rhythm. Each time before a tournament round I go out there and practice, that is the key to decide whether I'm going to play well. If my rhythm is good on the practice tee, I know my rhythm is going to be good on the golf course. Once you finish hitting your pitching wedges, you'll be able to feel that you're ready to hit some longer shots. I normally go with my pitching wedge, seven iron, five iron, three iron, one iron, then my three wooden driver. This way I'm getting my swing developed all the way through. I'm slowly building up to my maximum club, which is my driver, where I'm going to be hitting at probably 80, 85% of my power. So all the way through my clubs, I'm going to be building up to them. I'll move to my seven iron now. Now the clubs I've just used, the pitching wedge, the seven iron, the five iron, as I explained before, are pretty much the clubs you should have in your golf bag. Now I'm moving on to my three iron, which is a maybe, maybe golf club. For ladies, it's, a, you know, it's probably one of the tougher clubs to use because it's got less loft on. For the men, if you're just beginning to play the game, I think you want to try and steer a little bit clear of the long irons. 
Get yourself, as I said before, a lofted wood club, which makes it a little bit easy to use. Always play your natural game. If you naturally slice the ball, play for it. Lee Trevino does, he aims down the left side, fades it back. If you draw the ball like Gary Player, he aims down the right side and hooks it back. So always play your natural game, because it's there, you know where the golf ball is going to go, so you can play for it. So now we're into the longer clubs, like the seven iron. We're going to be swinging a little bit harder, and obviously your natural shot's going to start coming in. Once you're on the practice tee, these are things you try and pick out yourself. You try and feel why you hit that shot bad. And if you can find out yourself, when you get on the golf course, you can correct it yourself. You don't need somebody out there to try and pinpoint and show you what you're doing wrong. And as you build through your clubs, your driver, obviously, is going to be the most spectacular club because you're going to get all your distance out of it. Now I'm going to go into my longer irons, three iron and one iron. Now the most important thing with a three iron and one iron is don't try and pick it up. What I mean by pick it up is don't try and hit it in the air. I know there's a, these clubs that have got the least amount of loft on them, and most of the weekend players have a tendency of not wanting to use them because they can't hit them in the air. What, all you've got to do is just try and sweep the ball. We're getting nice and loose now, so we can just sweep in there, and don't try and hit down into the ball. Try and pick it clean. Just try and sweep the ball off the surface and let the loft of the club do all the, do all the work for you. faithful which is my driver this club here is my favorite club in the golf bag because I feel as though I hit it the best and the driver to me is a club that's going to do all the scoring for you a lot of people say drive for show and putt for dough I think it's the opposite you drive for dough and you putt for show because without your driver hitting the ball on the fairway all the time you're not going to be on the greens putting for birdies so your driver is the most important club in your bag because it's a club that's going to set up the hole for you. If you miss hit your driver, you're going to finish in the trees. If you hit the tri driver properly and with rhythm and consistency and keeping the ball in play, you're A, you're going to enjoy your game, and B, you're going to set yourself up for attacking the flag, which is what you need to do in golf. One of the most important things with your driver when you're warming up is to make sure you get your extension low and slow. At the moment right here for the last two or three shots, I was trying to keep my driver going back low to the ground and straight away from my target. That way we're getting the extension straight and we can bring the club head back straight through the ball. It's a little tip you can try and practice when you're warming up because it's going to help you when you play on the golf course. Well, the motto to try and remember is low and slow. Perfect. Okay, now that I've finished with my drivers, what you can do, you don't necessarily have to do it, is go to your sand iron, wind down a little bit because we've been winding up to the full length of clubs we go back and just soften our swing down a bit by hitting a few soft sand wedges maybe 25 30 yards and what this does is just get the feel back into your hand the feel for the soft shot so we can go out here go out in the golf course and we've covered the complete range of our clubs so we just take our sand iron out and swing at a very soft Four or five of these. 
and we're ready to go out on the golf course and win the competition. So good luck. the practice tee onto the first tee and I hit a nice solid drive and that was a beauty about going out onto the practice tee we went out and loosened up and warmed up so I could come out here and have a nice solid drive and once you do that you feel enthusiastic you feel ready to go out and play and once you do that bang we're going to win more competitions than we're going to lose because we're keen we're eager so remember go to the practice tee loosen up and come out on the first tee and drive off and when you get to the first tee just relax. Don't try and hit the drive down on the fairway. Just remember what you did on the practice tee, the rhythm, the tempo, the nice smooth low takeaway, building up to all that power we talked about and coming through and unleashing it. Just waiting for that club head to come through and hit the ball. So just wait for it and relax. And go out there and shoot 63 and have a great day. Right here now we've we played our tee shot We've got a second shot into the green, and we see all the trouble down there. And the trouble I see is down the front. So therefore, we've got to make sure we take enough club to carry the trouble. Don't play the 100% shot. The game of golf, we've got to try and make simple. We've got to try and make it easy so everybody can enjoy it. So here we are now. We're looking at the green. We've got all the trouble short. I've got about 180 to 82 yards there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my four iron, a nice smooth four iron, and make sure I get over all the trouble and get it near the flag. So we address here, calculate where the wind's coming from, and in this situation, it's just out of the left quarter, and set up for that. Remembering our basics, rhythm, tempo, nice grip pressure, comfortable stance, our body nice and relaxed, and just swing away at it. Putting out of your mind all the trouble, and all we're thinking about is the flag, where we want the ball to go. So here we go, nice smooth rhythm. And we hit it right on the flag step. Look at the percentage shot. Don't go for the 100% shot. The 100% shot only comes off about 10% of the time. So we've got 90% more to play with and we're guaranteed to improve our game. There's one other shot I'd like to show you. We're in exactly the same position as the shot I just hit, but this time I want to demonstrate the punch shot for you. It's a very effective shot in the wind, especially here in Australia where the southeasterlies and the southerlies get up all over the country. And you've got to learn to play the punch shot, no matter who you are or how bad a golfer you are or how good a golfer you are, the punch shot is a very important shot. And it's a very easy shot to learn because it's a simple shot. It's got very simple basics and a very simple movement. And this is a quick way to learn. What we do is we're trying to bring the ball back in our stance. We're trying to keep the ball below the wind. We're going to bore it in there. And to do that, we've got to bring it back in our stance. Now, this is contrary to what I said before about keeping the ball in the same position. That was for a full swing, a normal swing. This time, we're playing a punch shot. So we bring the ball back in our stance a little bit. We bring it there, maybe equal in the middle of our stance. And what we're doing is we're going to widen our stance just a tad. So when we get in this position here, we lean towards the target, not lean like this or fall into it or just just lean just a fraction, a hair. Our hands are ahead of the ball. We keep our club face square to the target, which is most important. The club face is square, we're leaning into it. Our weight is back on our heels. And what we're doing here is we're lowering our center of gravity. We're bringing the center of gravity of our body closer to the ground so we can keep the ball lower to the ground. So we get in that position, get the ball back in our stance a little bit, We've got our club face nice and square to the target. Our hands are fractionally ahead. And because our center of gravity is a little bit lower, our hand position is going to be a little bit lower because our knees are flexed and they're softer. So now we get into this nice, smooth, compact, powerful punch position, I call it, because we're all ready. We want to drive that club head into the ball and shoot it down underneath the wind. So we've got this position here. Now. We've got to relax our grip, make sure we don't get too much pressure, like in every golf shot. We keep the same tension in our hands. And what we're going to do is we're going to push it back so low, a little bit longer around along the ground, 
Extension is the key to this shot. Keep the club head going away from the ball. And in doing that, making sure we turn our body and turn our hips. Now we're only going to go to back to about here. We're going to stop short in our swing. And from there, we're going to drive very hard with our right knee and come through, making sure we don't fall into the shot. Make sure we keep the head behind the ball. And we're going to drive there like that. And the club face is going to come through a little bit shut. And we're going to hit it out to the right and draw it back. So here we go. See if we can do, practice what we preach. Get in that position, I'm ready to drive the ball, get it under the wind. Nice short, firm follow through. You notice my follow through didn't get above my waist. It stopped about here because I was driving, I was keeping my left hand, the back of my left hand going through to the target and holding the club face up like this. The other easy punch shot is to play for the fade punch shot, which I think is the easiest shot to play and the one I stick to whenever I play it. It's the same setup, same ball position, just instead of aiming right, I aim left and I take the club head fractionally on the outside of the line. And in doing that, I'm gonna come down nice and low to the ball and with a little cutting action across the ball and the ball's gonna start left, very low, and fade back to the flag. So if you just watch carefully, same position as the draw punch shot, hands ahead, same swing, and the ball will fade back on the target. It's an easy shot to practice, because it's very simple. The basics are there, so go out and work on it. Well, here we are. I've hooked it off the into the trees to the left of the fairway and out to the right here is the fairway about 50 yards. I have two options I could play. I could chip it out onto the fairway, it's a par five and hopefully get it on the green in, in three to try and salvage my par or I can look at the option of going up and over. It's an almost 100% shot to play and it's a shot that you've really got to feel 100% and comfortable about. The way I approach this shot is I'll need the elevation, so therefore I'm going to put the ball further forward in my stance. I'm going to put more weight back on my right heel. And in doing that, I'm going to change my center of gravity. I'm pulling my center of gravity back away from the ball, so when I come in to the impact position, my, my body is back here, my weight's behind it, and the club is going to come through the ball and up much quicker than normal. And from there, we just put a normal swing on it. Don't try and rush at it. Just take your time and swing at it normally. And this one last look at the top of the tree to get the height you need to hit on it, and then through the ball. Up and over. Now we've got a good chance of making four. I'd just like to demonstrate to you at this time a few trouble shots, especially the hook shot and the slice shot. When we get into low-lying trees or high-lying trees and we've got to get them around back onto the fairway very quickly, the hook shot can be a very important shot. The best way to do it, I've heard a lot of people make comments about when you go to hook the ball, use your body to hook it and change your swing and change your grip. Well, I think that's when you try and change your swing, you're making too many basic fundamental errors. The best way, I think, and the simplest way to hook the ball is this way. What we do is, we pick out where we want the ball to finish. Like if we're trying to get the ball around a tree back onto the green, what we do is we put our club face at the target where we want the ball to finish. So if we want to hook it around a big tree just here, we aim to put our club face on the flag, and then we take our normal stance and set up, aiming to the right of the target of where we want the ball to go around. So this way, we just put our club face down there. If you notice, my club face is very shut, very hooked to the ball. And I take my normal grip. Don't change your grip at all. Take my normal stance. And this way, all we have to do is swing the club a natural way without changing anything. And when that happens, we take it back there and the club face comes in shut. It's still aiming where the, where the target is or where the end result of the ball is going to be. And so the club face is going to put all the hook on the ball hook spin and it'll turn around your um, your tree or your trouble. Don't try and hook the ball when you're in this position because your club face is going to do it for you. So here we go. 
We put our club face nice and shut, take our normal address position, aiming around our object or around all our trouble, and just take a nice smooth swing. And it'll hook around it. One thing you must remember though, is don't try and force the ball. You've got to relax and let it happen. And if you're going to try and hook it, say 150 yards, take out an eight iron or a nine iron, because by the time you shut your club face, as much as we need to, to hook it around the tree, your club's going to finish up like a five or a six iron. Just therefore take an eight or nine iron, shut your club face, aim around your object, make sure your face is where you want the ball to finish, and take a nice, smooth, natural swing, and the ball will automatically turn around your trouble. Now I'm going to show the intentional slice. It's exactly the same principle. We're going to open up our club face instead of shutting it. We're going to aim left around the object we want to slice the ball and just swing normally. The only difference with this shot is instead of taking an eight or a nine iron for the uh, 150 yard shot, we're going to take something like a five or a four iron because the more you open the club face, the more loft you're going to put on it. So therefore we're just going to lay the club face on the target where we want the ball to finish and we're going to aim our body around the tree or the rock or whatever problems are in front of us. We're going to swing the same, we're going to grip the same, we're not doing anything different with our goal swing, just making the club face do all the work. So we put the club face way open where we want it to finish, take our normal grip, normal stance, and just swing at it nice and relaxed. Don't try and force the ball around the tree because it'll go around itself. It's as simple as that. So whenever we get into trouble anywhere on the golf course with these basic ideas on uh, concentration on hook and slice, we should be able to get out and go on to improve our golf score. To sweep the ball off the surface for our bump and run shot, the easiest way to do that is have minimal wrist break. And what I mean by minimal wrist break, well, I see a lot of weekend players and even professional golfers attempt a shot like this by breaking their wrist. And then what happens there is you're picking the club head up. When you pick the club head up, you're going to be coming down on such a descending blow, the ball's going to have too much backspin on it. So with our bump and run shot that I'm trying to show you now, what we're going to do is keep minimal wrist break, take the club head low back along the ground, and keep it coming through the ball low to the ground as well, keeping it parallel to the surface, no divot, or anything like that. So we remember, minimal wrist break, keep the hands nice and light. We take it back low to the ground. And it bumps up there and trickles up near the flag. As long as you keep the club head going through the ball, you'll find that it's a lot easier to get the ball near the hole. The shot we have here is a simple little chip shot. And the best way to relate to a chip shot is like an extended putt. Here we've got about six feet or more of uh, dead grass and then we're coming onto the putting surface and there's about 35, 45 feet of putting green. And we're going to just pop the ball onto the ground, onto the putting green and roll it down to the hole. And the way we do that is just set up like a normal putt and take the club head back low to the ground and make sure you're accelerating through the ball. So we just picked our target on the green Make sure we're trying to land it there without any backspin and let it run on down to the hole. is they try to get the ball out. Now, in a bunker shot, you don't go in there and you dig at the ball and try and hit it into it hard. The bunker shot is a very smooth, free-flowing swing. What, what you're trying to do is getting the sand between the ball and the club face to throw it out that way. It, the ball very seldom touches the club face. It's the sand that throws the ball out. And it just depends how hard you hit into the sand is how hard or how much spin the ball comes out with. There are many uh, bad faults with people in the bunkers. They get in there and they, A, they grip the club too tight. 
They come in here and they go and move forward on the shot and dig into the sand. You notice there's a big divot there. They've tried to get the ball out. The other big fault that the weekend players have is they come in here and instead of staying down with the ball, they come up and they rifle it right over the top of the green. So what we're trying to do with the bunker shot is come in here and be friends with them. When I miss this green with my second shot, I'd rather miss it into the bunker than miss it onto the grass because in the sand I know I can do it many different shots. I can spin it or do whatever. Out of the grass you can't control the ball as much. So eliminating the faults that I just showed you before, hitting it fat and then hitting the ball right in the middle. The idea is to come in here and just swing at it nice and smooth. Let your hands come into the sand and let it keep going through. Don't try and force the club head through the sand. Let your hands bring the club head through slowly. We're trying to just flop it out. We've got to grip the club very lightly. The other, that's another important thing. Grip the club loosely because you automatically, when, as soon as you start taking the club head away, you're going to tighten up anyway. And the more, the t more you tighten your grip, the, the more you're going to swing shorter and the faster you're going to come down. So what we do is we have a nice loose grip, we lay our club face back flat, and we just treat it nice and relaxed, and just flop the club head into the ball, like that. And it's just a nice, smooth, easy motion. You notice I didn't jerk at it to try and get the ball out. All I did on that shot was just get the ball on the green and run it down to the hole. Now when you try it out there, just relax. Don't force the ball, just let the ball get onto the green. And you notice, when I came through the sand, the club head kept accelerating through. It didn't decelerate, I didn't stop at it, which is probably one of the biggest faults the weekend players use on a bunker. Just keep the club head going through the sand, nice and softly, the hands working towards the target, keeping down on the ball, and it'll come out nice and softly for you. Before, I showed you the shot out of soft sand. Now my ball's come over the back of the green, and I'm in a very hard panned lie. Because this is probably one of the toughest shots you can get to play, especially if there's very little green to work with. Now every sand iron you buy, you're going to have a flange on it. And the flange is what's going to help you get the ball out. We want this part to strike the hard ground first. And when it strikes the hard ground, it naturally closes the club face a little bit. So if you start with the club face there, it's going to go like that even more and just dig in. So what we're doing is we're opening it up a little more. So this part of the, the um, sole of the club is going to strike the ground first. It's automatically going to shut the club face just fractionally. It's going to be minimal, but it's going to be enough to bring the club face back to its normal position. And hopefully the ball will go out nice and smooth. But we're just going to try and take a little bit easier. We're just going to use a little softer hand motion and just try and flop it out. Once again, we spread our stance. We know there's no sand underneath there. So we just take our time, open that club face right up, and just flop the club head in behind the ball. Like so. Now we come to one of the most hated shots in golf, the buried lie. You notice my ball there is in a nice poached egg position. Most people who see this shot get all panicky because they don't know how to get it out. In actual fact, it's probably one of the easiest shots to get out if you know what you're going to do. What we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and bring the club head into the sand just at the top of the, the crater there. And we're going to bring it in there. And I have my own way of playing this shot. What I do is I bring the club head in there with a very open club face and I stab at it. I go like that, just stab it out. And what's happening there is I'm just dropping the club head in behind the ball, stopping the club head there and letting the sand throw it out. That's all you need to do. The ball is going to come out with a hell of a lot of roll on it. So we just got to allow it just to land on the green and run down. So we're just going to put a little bit further back in our stance. Make sure we're going to come down with a more of a descending blow. Before, we weren't coming down so sharply. What I mean by sharp is picking the club head up and coming down like chopping wood. This one, we want to chop the wood. The other ones were more or less sweeping away very slowly and very softly. Now this shot here, we're going to remember, we're going to try and enter the sand at the top of the crater, club face open, and we're just going to stab down on it. And the ball is just going to pop up and run down towards the flag, tap the putt in, and we made our par. Now we've got a shot in the bunker that is 
a very difficult shot to play. We've got very little green to work with. Let's say we've got 15 feet of green to work with. We've got a high bank to get up over. So we've got to get the ball up quickly with a lot of backspin. Now this way, this shot, we once again open the cop face wide open, lay it well back, flat, almost parallel, almost the same shot as a hard pan shot. I mean, same position. And we put the ball a little further forward in our stance. Because what we want to do now is we're trying to nip the ball. We don't want to, we're trying to take a minimum amount of sand as possible. And in doing this, we're going to get elevation and we're going to get spin. So what I do, I put my ball further forward in the stance and I bring my hands back a little bit. I mean, don't mean back like this. I mean, just this is my normal hand position here and I'll just bring it back here like that. And what happens there, and bring it back, when I come in to strike the ball, my hands are going to go back to the normal position and with my right hand whipping through like this, the club is going to be opening up a little more and going to be throwing the ball up higher with a lot of spin. In this position here, I'm laying the club face well open, nice and flat, almost parallel to the surface of the bunker, and I'm going to whip my right hand through a little quicker. And what I mean by through, I mean I want to come this way, not roll over like that, but bring it through and under the ball like that. And what that does is, it just brings the club face coming up like that. It's almost like an elevator effect. And the, the club, it'll come in underneath the ball. It's increasing its speed through the ball, and it's going to pick it up like that. We're going to stay in behind the ball, keep our head steady, and whip it through. Don't be scared of the shot. If you're scared of it, it'll never work. Be positive, and with the positive approach, you're going to get it up and down without any problem. How many times have we all played this game and we've ended up with a shot like this? We've got the ball sitting in fluffy grass, and we've got a big yawning bunker in front of us, and we've only got about 22, maybe 25 feet of green to work with. What we do is we're going to lay the club face very flat behind the ball. And by I mean flat, I mean just like the soft bunker shot we had, soft sand. We lay it down there, and this shot is mainly a hand shot. We're trying to get our hands to float in through and underneath the ball. So we're going to try and flip it grip the club very softly and flip our right hand and left, arm, left hand through the ball with a very soft, slow swing. So we lay it back down there nice and flat, grip the club very soft, and we're trying to just use our hands, very little leg action, and we pop it up in the air and we nearly get it in the hole. So you've got to remember that it's a hand shot. You've got to have loose hands, relaxed hands, and make sure the club head comes through very slowly through the ball and gets accelerating through and it's going to pop it up with the open club face and it's going to just land on the green and trickle on towards the hole. Well, here we are. We finally hit a good tee shot, hit a good second shot into the green, and we've got about a 15, 18 footer to make birdie. What we do is when we reach the putting green, we try and sum up the situation. We look at the color of the grass, we look at the slope of the green, and then we try and judge the speed by the, by the texture of the surface. A good little tip to remember is when you're walking to the green, is look at the color of the grass. If you see a dark color, that means you're going to be going into the green. So just remember, dark color into the green, and if it's a light color surface, that means you're going down grain, so it's going to be faster. So if you're into the green and it's dark, it's going to be slow. If you're down grain and it's light, it's going to be quick. I don't think I could tell you the best way to grip a putter because everybody's got their own feel. I think what you've got to do is experiment yourself. What I can do for you now is just show you a few basic tips with putting, like keeping the putter low to the ground, keep it accelerating through the ball, making sure the putter stays square to the line you've chosen all the way to the hole. And another good little tip too is just imagine in the back of the ball you can see a tack. So when you're standing over the top of the ball, and you're looking down ready to putt, you picture a tack sitting in the back of the ball. And what we're going to do is imagine we're going to drive that tack with the putter head into the ball. And to do that, we've got to hit through it. And bang, we keep the motion accelerating the putter head through to the ball, through to the hole. It's a simple little tip. It's easy to put in your mind because a tack you can relate to, and it's just like hitting a nail with a hammer. Okay, so we put the club head behind the ball, get it nice and square, picture the tack in there, make sure our eyes are directly over the top of the ball so we can get nice and square, 
However you stand is up to you. Once again, it's individualistic. You stand the way you feel most comfortable and the most balanced. And then we just stand there, picture the tack. Now pick out your target. What I do when I putt, I like to pick out a point where I want to putt over. If there's a little break from left to right, I'll pick out a little object, like an old divot mark or a different color part of the green, where I want the ball to go over. Right, now we're in a nice solid position. We've got our weight back on our heels. We're relaxed. And the most important thing is make sure your hands are loose and relaxed. Because when your hands are relaxed, your forearms and shoulders are going to be relaxed. And we can let that putter flow through, freely through the ball. And from this position, again, put it in your mind, the speed and the distance the hole is away from you. Pick out your target on the green where you're trying to putt it over. And make sure you visualize the tack in the back of the ball. And from there, we concentrate, follow through, and we make the putt. Now, there's many different ways you can grip the putter. I myself grip it a couple of ways, depending on how I feel each week. Sometimes I grip it with my left hand a little bit more underneath the putter. By that I mean it's the back of the hand is pointing towards the ground. And sometimes if I feel very confident, very nice, I keep the back of my hand square to the hole. It just depends on how you feel. Putting is all feel, it's all in your hands. So you go out there and experiment. You see some very strange grips out there on the putter on the golf course, but they all work. Doesn't matter how you grip it, as long as you get that nice smooth acceleration through to the hole, it's going to work. Now there are different putters you can buy. There again, it's individualistic. I can't tell you how long you should have your putter. I can't tell you how heavy it is. Again, go out there, experiment for yourself, and once you find out the right one, stick to it. Because you've got to get used to the feel and get to know your putter, because it's going to get to know you to go on and win many tournaments. So good luck, have a good putting round, have a good day on the golf course, and I'll see you out there sometime. Oh,